All right, we all want to be that clutch putter, that guy that makes everything when it really matters. And we're going to talk about how to do that today in a really good drill that's very counterintuitive. Most people practice their putting the wrong way. Most people want to hit those dead straight putts, but they're actually practicing in a way that's going to make it easier to choke, easier for the stroke to fall apart, and actually be less consistent as you're out there putting. We're going to talk about a drill here today that's actually going to transfer out to the course and the right way to practice your putting. Let's go ahead and get started. Now be sure to click that subscribe button below. I got a lot of great videos coming out for you this year, and if you're not a subscriber, you won't be notified when those are released. Also click that thumbs up and post your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, so here I have a drill set up that's gonna allow us to get feedback. And the biggest thing, whenever we're practicing, we need direct cause and effect feedback. I need to know when I do A, I get result B. When I do C, I get result D. And then I can start to understand what makes me a good putter, what makes me a bad putter, why I pull putts, why I push putts, and I really get a feel for what's going on in my body. That's the first thing we're gonna talk about. I have a drill set up here that's gonna give us that cause and effect feedback. Number two, we have to practice in a way that's gonna to transfer to the course. If I sit at my, my, on a putting mat at home and I make putt after putt after putt, those eight footers, but then I go to the course and I can't make any of my eight footers, well, that practice didn't really work. I have to practice in a way that's backed up by science that's gonna allow me to transfer that to the course so I can go to the course, hit one putt, and, and plan on making that thing. So let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing I would do, if you're out on a golf course, on the putting green, find a dead straight putt. That's the only way we're gonna be able to test if we can hit straight. We have to know that the putt isn't breaking any. So I found a dead straight putt here. Just roll a few until you find one that doesn't break at all. And I've set up something that's gonna give me feedback here, which is my eyeline putting mirror. This is a great device because you can throw it in your golf bag, really lightweight, it's plastic, gives you good feedback, and it's, it's not hard to lug around. Now from there, what I've done is I've put up a set of tees to let me know if I'm pushing or pulling this putt right or left as I'm hitting it. So they made it right through the middle of these two tees. So the reason for this is sometimes when I putt, I could have something kick my ball offline. Maybe the wind gusts, maybe something happens that makes me miss that putt when I didn't really push it or I didn't really pull it. These are gonna give me a little bit more accurate feedback and uh, more immediate feedback too. The quicker I can get the feedback, so if I hit this putt and as soon as I make contact with it, it whacks into one of these tees, that gives you a more direct cause and effect relationship and your brain can actually imprint that information a little quicker too. So bunch of fancy stuff, just put some tees in the ground, <laughs> you'll be good to go. If you're at home in a, with a mat, you just put a couple golf balls, the inside of the golf balls, at a width to where your ball would barely miss that if you're putting through it. And you can adjust that wider or more narrow based on your skill level. Another cool thing about these, when you set up a little barrier like this, I can bring those tighter and tighter together to where the gap here is actually smaller than the hole in the distance if we get really advanced with it. So now that I've got my mirror set up, I've got a dead straight putt, I've got some tees for feedback. Now I'm really, I have a, a, a system here that can know if I'm gonna be able to put this ball straight and now I can really practice this. Now the first thing that I think affects people most commonly is how they set up to the golf ball. And what I like to do is I like to set up where on this mirror, when I'm looking down, my left eye is directly in line with the golf ball and the target line and it's just slightly behind that. So I almost feel like I'm looking down the target line as I'm putting. You can also be a little bit more inside. There's great putters that have their eyes a little more inside the golf ball. Anywhere in a range of say two inches within the golf ball is completely fine. Where I find people often get off track is they'll get their eyes outside the golf ball to where now my eyes would be out here somewhere and that's just not gonna be very good because I'm kind of looking at a kind of a funny angle. I typically find that the players that have their eyes well outside the golf balls don't do well off the golf ball. Now, here's the thing. Most of the time when you hear drills like this, what players are going to, what pros are going to tell you to do, what players are going to think they need to do is set this up and do the same thing over and over and over again. That's what's called block practice. And the research shows that that is not going to transfer to the course very well. And it's not going to help you to learn to control your face angle or to hit the straight putts very well. You're gonna feel good when you're practicing this. If I do block practice and I get to where I'm doing the same thing over and over again, I'm gonna sit here and I'm just gonna nail putt after putt after putt, and I'm gonna feel like I'm getting a lot better, and then I'm gonna to go to the course and get wildly inconsistent. So I feel good when I'm practice, practice, I feel bad when it matters. If we wanna do this right, we need to make it more of a challenge when we practice 
so that we can feel good when we go to the course. Make practice tougher than the real thing, and that's gonna allow you to be better when it matters. So let's grab these golf balls again, and let's talk about what I'm gonna do to make my practice tougher and to really practice in what's called a random practice way. It's gonna transfer to the course much better. So the first thing is with my eye set up, instead of getting your eyes exactly set up the same way every time, what I want you to do is play around with your, your eye alignment. Get your eyes well outside the golf ball, what I would say is a bad alignment, and see what happens to your putts. Now for me, typically I'm gonna do something like that where I'm gonna yank my putt inside or to the left. That's just because I end up closing the face down a little too much when I get my eyes outside. So I now, now know after testing this out, the cause and effect relationship there. If I start to pull putts, that may be the first thing I look at. I might wanna get my eyes a little bit more inside so I can get my, my putter face more square and more lined up better. So you're gonna find that. Maybe for you, it's something a little bit different. Maybe you have a different result, but play around with your eye alignment and not only just see how that feels, but see what the putts do. Do you start missing right or do you start missing left? Now you have something that is really good that you can take to the course. When you start to miss those putts, now I can adjust a little bit. So now let's go ahead and do a little bit inside and I would putt there. Now for me, again, if I get too far inside, I'm gonna to tend to come inside out, have the face open. It's more of an arcing stroke and I might hit that outside tee and have some problems there. So play around with your, your eye alignment first. That's the easiest and quickest way I've found to, to get some cause and effect relationships with if I'm missing right or I'm missing left. You're gonna do quite a few of those, 20 or 30 putts varying and seeing how that affects it. Now the second piece of this is just simply attempting to hit the inside tee and the outside tee, back and forth and back and forth. Now what this does, so the way I would set this up is I would hit one putt where I try to go between the tees. So now I'm setting up well, going between the tees, I make the putt. And now on this next one, I'm gonna on purpose, and this sounds crazy, but I'm gonna on purpose try to hit the inside tee. The next putt, I'm going to, again, on purpose, try to hit the outside tee. And what this will do is after you go through this the first time, you're gonna say, you know, I don't know what I'm doing here. I feel like I'm just super inconsistent. But as you go through it again and again, what actually happens is you start to feel, okay, when I push putts, when I block putts to the right, I have this sensation. I have whatever the sensation is for you personally. When I block putts to the right, I feel this, or I feel like I'm holding off the face, or I have a sensation that, that I have. When I pull putts to the left, I have a completely different sensation. I feel like I'm doing something different with my body. So now your body learns. You're actually learning something here you can take to the course. When I push, it feels like this. When I pull, it feels like this other thing. And when I hit it good and straight, I know it feels different than both of those. So now I can start to train and learn what right, left, and straight feels like. And if I get out to the course, for example, I hit a few putts in the beginning of the day, and I notice that I'm pulling all those left, I can simply do a different feel, I can adjust my feel based on what I know now through my practice, and I'm gonna be right back on track. If I just hit the same putt over and over again, think how crazy this is. If I set up here and I hit the same putt and I try to do everything exactly the same and I miss one, how do I know what I did wrong? How do I know what the feel is? I have no feedback to know what's going on. So now if I miss one on purpose, I can start to develop that feel so that I become almost automatic when I become really clutch and I can hit those straight putts very, very effortlessly. So this is a great drill, I highly recommend it. I know you guys are gonna make a lot more putts when you get to the course if you practice this way. Now we don't wanna stop here. One of the things I touched on a little bit was how to get your eyes set up properly. We can go into a lot more detail getting the entire body set up properly. And that's why I have an awesome bonus video for you. Just go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen or the link down below in the description. You're gonna get instant access to one of my best putting setup videos. Again, it's gonna help you to be more consistent and learn how your body affects your starting line and how straight you can hit those putts. Best of luck, let's go ahead and get started. Let me ask you if this has ever happened to you before. You find yourself over a pretty important putt. Maybe it's only six or seven feet. You've probably made hundreds if not thousands of these over your career. But now you find yourself over one of these to win a match, to shoot one of your lowest rounds, to save a par on a very important hole. And you try to tell yourself to do all the things you've heard before. You try to tell yourself to be nice and soft with your hands, to keep your head still, to really focus on positive thoughts, on, on really good things. But you just can't for the life of you. No matter what you visualize, you cannot picture this ball going into the hole. It doesn't seem like it's physically possible for that to happen. You find yourself getting kind of tight or jerky with your hands. The smoother you try to make your hands, the jerkier they get. Then you pull back the trigger, 
you make this long back swing, you decelerate, and all of a sudden you miss that putt. And it's so frustrating because you know it's so simple. It's so close, you should be able to make these all the time. Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of those common myths, how that good instruction, those good tips can actually be hurting your putting, how to get confident over those putts and drain those short to mid-range put range putts every time and win those points. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's talk about this first misconception with putting. One of these things is this good advice that can really hurt your short putts. We all know that we wanna be